I actually prefer this. Um, and having more I'm, pieces. Which I'm sure the wife was very happy about hearing that, you know, is uh, much less. So <laughs> That's <laughs> for sure. Days. Although she was expecting not to buy anything else then, but I'm still buying smaller pieces. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. It, it never ends. She's happier <laughs> than she would have been. She's not happy yet. <laughs> Hopefully she's not watching. Today we're going to be taking a look at Danny's collection. Now Danny is a photographer here at Kibble Watches. He does all of our photos. He's whiz on a budget on Instagram. I think a lot of you have probably heard of him from there. He's also been in the industry for many years and is going to be our first full-time employee right now, part-time employed by us. But we're going to have a closer look at what's in his collection that he absolutely loves and hear his stories. So let's take a look. So Danny, thank you for joining me on our first episode of this series. Now. We obviously invited you because we wanted to see your collection yes. and I thought it would be interesting for the viewers out there to see what our photographer actually owns. Um, but also because it was quite convenient as exactly. well. I'm already here. Exactly. We get to test out all the angles and where the microphone should go yep. and make all the mistakes before we have a real collector on, you know what I mean? So. <laughs> I'm the guinea pig. You're right. the guinea pig, yes, Great. exactly. Well, thank you for bringing the watches. I know it's not your entire collection, but it's a core of it. Yeah. Um, so, what got you into collecting? Why watches? So, I had always had a watch when I was a kid, like one of these like, really cheap, no-name quartz watches, sort of like a G-Shock, but I never cared about it. I got it from like parents, whatever. Couldn't care less about it, really. Um, and after a while, I stopped buying it anyway, because I got a phone, yep. and who needs a watch, right? Convenience, yes. Exactly. Uh, and then my uncle was into watches, still is sort of, um, and he gave me one of his old watches, which was actually not exactly this, we'll get onto that in a second, but this model. So this is a Seiko, um, how do you say it? Gigiero. Gigiero. That's how I say it. Probably very go. wrong. Sort of like that. Yeah, Machina Sportiva. It's a limited edition. Um, and he gave me his. And I wore it for quite a bit, for years. Again, I wore it because it was he gave it to me. Um, and it sort of I sort of liked it, but again, I still didn't really care much yeah. right um i moved to england i worked for a bit and it stopped took it into a watch shop asked for a service and they quoted me some ridiculous amount of money for some reason i don't even remember why maybe so me i was i was new in the country i was dumb i don't know <laughs> <laughs> taking Gullible. advantage yeah. yes i don't know <laughs> um i said yeah no way can't pay that amount of money and i took it home put it in one of the drawers and off to the internet i went to find something new okay so you, you still own this watch today no, because in a move, I lost oh, it. Oh, God. Oh, no. But the question is, so why I have one? Because after a few years, no, not a few years ago, a year ago, my uncle's 50th, 55th anniversary, um, birthday came up. Okay. And I thought that, okay, he's still in the watches, but he hasn't had a, a new piece in a million years. Not like this is new anyway. Um, but I always wanted to show him that this, in the end, did mean a lot to me. And I hated that I lost it. Um, so I went to eBay, started Crawl, you know, looking through if I could find another one or something like that. And I found a guy in Spain who had not only this one, the blue, which he gave me originally, but an orange too, together. With just one box, but with a box. <laughs> <laughs> and two questionable quality bracelets. Uh, you can't which, see it on video. Just before the video started, I accidentally pulled apart. So yeah. I'm gonna to be fair, they were perfect before that. Yeah, um, I promise <laughs> uh, if you're going to do this collection video, I won't pull apart your watches. <laughs> yes. um, so in the end, I bought both of them, of course. Um, gave him a choice if he'd like the the orange or the blue um he went for the orange good choice um, and i kept the blue as a reminder that this is where it actually started oh it's very general. nice um yeah. good place to start really with seiko and i see you've yeah. still got seiko in your collection of Vintage course i Modern. always have a seiko and i think well that speaks to what you collect isn't it you know at the end of the day you've got uh, we'll get onto the watches but you've got you know speedmaster but you also have these incredibly well-valued watches as well you know the next piece is obviously the orient there yes but is that is that where your collection has always been and is that where you always intend it to be like you mean like the more affordable, affordable. very good value well, because as my name suggests we're on a budget i'm on a budget <laughs> Especially since I'm married now. And I pay him two pence an hour, so yeah, that as well. Oh, so I get a race, cool. Um, <laughs> we, we did discuss that, that's uh, live there for you. <laughs> <laughs> but I think yes, because I think micro brands as well, obviously this is not a micro brand, but I do have a few micro brands. Mm -hmm. Not at the moment, that much, just the Baltic. But micro brands in general have such a ridiculous value proposition and just so many different designs that big brands just, they cannot go around and do that. 
No, they get very stuck in the corporate way of they exactly. have to produce this, they have to produce that. Whereas you say micro brands have the the opportunity to do things different, and, and they have to, and they have to, yeah. And we're gonna out. we'll touch on that when we get to the Baltic as well, because yes. I think that's exactly one of them. But the Orient. So yeah, the Orient was the watch I bought after going through the forums. After like, they stopped working, um, and I spent I think a couple of months on like what you see and on other forums, going for a a cheap budget watch that was automatic. I wanted to have an automatic because I just found out what it is actually. Um, and something that looks good. And um, found this after a few months, ordered it from Singapore. It came in like in two days, 100 pounds, right? It came in two, da- two days. Two days from Singapore, yeah. <laughs> ridiculous, insane. I didn't even expect it. Yeah, in two yeah. days. I was like, okay. Um, and I had it since, it's the same exact watch. It's a bit better now. It has some history behind it as well. The base is absolutely mangled because um, we've been a, uh, you bar won. fight, which I tried to help my boss. You, a bar fight with this watch on? All yes, right. yes. Yeah. It got knocked clean off of me. Oh, God. Yes, so it's really messed up, but, you know, I love it still. Usually not on the brace, I just put it on to, to show how, you know, it's always been worn, it's not yeah. been babied, because why would you baby a £100 watch? Even though, at that, <laughs> at that time, £100 for a watch for me was ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who, who yeah. spends their money on a watch, right? I know. Um, so it's usually on a, on, a, on a, like a Barton silicone strap or something like that, or a NATO. Yeah. God forbid, James. I know. Um, the yeah. So hopefully I'll, I'll give it a new crystal or something, but this is the third generation Mako, so you can see the vid day pusher, which they discontinued straight away in the second gen. Yes. Um, it's God. a quirky watch, <laughs> but I love it. I think it's gorgeous blue sunburst, day, sunburst think, eight dial. Yeah, exactly. And I think design-wise, this is fantastic. It's a great alternative to Seiko if you are looking out there for a very good, affordable watch. And I remember my dad bought this exact same one, gen- this generation with the crown, okay. uh, the extra crown. And he bought it, I think, for £70 on eBay. And I think it came with about eight straps, which was mad. So, you know, they they can be found for really good values. We yeah. had a red one recently. Oh, the Kamasu, the new Kamasu. one. So that's like a... What, fourth or fifth generation? Yeah, That's quite down so the line. you can find the older ones or the newer ones, and they're all incredible, though. And I think Orient are, are brilliant. And also, if you get in a bar fight, you can use it as knuckle dusters, apparently. So there you go. And also, uh, I don't know how others are with theirs. Reliab- reliability wise, mine has been perfect. As I said, this is nine years old, been in a fair fight, fair few, um, not fights, but a fair <laughs> I was few. Gonna say, got a fair few knocks to tell me, and everything, no. <laughs> um, been in the ocean, you know, swimming with it, showering with it, whatever. Uh, and knock on wood, perfect. You know, hundred pounds nine years ago. Nice. What can you say about it? It's never gonna leave. And on that note, I will say, if you have a watch for nine years, you haven't had it service or water tested, please don't go in the ocean with it. You, this is a rare occasion. Not <laughs> this is in the rules. He's right. He's right. To be fair, he's right. Kills me every time. I have a couple of customers who go in the ocean with their Speedmaster. I'm like, what? Well, that kills me too. To oh, be fair. God. But talking about Speedmaster, see these segues? I'm getting wow. pretty good at this. Okay. You guys, you, you, Hadinki, watch out, right? We're cool. <laughs> so, Speedmaster Reduced or Speedmaster Automatic. So yes. many nicknames to this. So this was years and years after the Orient, or when I started. I went through a million different micro brands. Um, and a few of them were chronographs, but I was, I was never really into them. I always sold them after like just a few months um, because I didn't use the chronograph function. Still rarely use it anyway, but I like the the design on either someone else's based on just pictures, and I put it on, and I never really liked this. Good, yeah. but then the speedy, I always liked how it looked, um, and I decided that on my first year birthday I'm gonna get the, pro- the professional. Okay, but of course they are four four and a half grand, five thousand pounds, whatever. They're not cheap. Quite a big, exactly quite a big investment. So I thought, okay, I don't want to buy it. And ended up again not wearing it and selling it at a big loss. Um, yeah, who knows? Um, so this came along, perfect example to test drive the sort of design because it's incredibly similar, just in a smaller case and yep. automatic, of course. Um, I bought it, found one in Hungary, great price, box everything, um, service just before I bought it. Um, and I don't want a professional anymore. <laughs> it's such a perfect size because I got smaller wrists, right? I got six and a half inch wrists. Um, and for you, it just ticks all the boxes. For me, it just ticks all the boxes. And one important note there as well, um, service before you bought it. So yeah. with these, I, I will always say, uh, try and get them serviced before you buy them um, because it's a, it's basically a stacked movement. As well. Yeah, so really great watch, really good looking watch. 
bit of a nightmare to service when it comes to that. But I mean, I had one from '97, my birth year. Incredible watch. I, I think. Stupid to sell it. Oh, tell me about it. But I'm very happy you still have yours. And you say it's it's made you completely rule out the the professional now because I know. I think so. Yes. Because you worked at retail for a while, and yeah, I, I actually had a professional for roughly a year. Yeah. And it's great. Um, the thing is with the size, it had. This was the previous generation, so with the previous bracelet with the male handlings, which I absolutely hated. Because again, small wrist, it was just protruding out and looked dumb. Um, the watch it still looks great. Um, I, I can appreciate both dial designs. Um, but with all the other things, the small case, um, I don't think I want a professional. I would nice. might go for like a different version of it. Mm -hmm. Like we, we talked about the um, Speedy Tuesday or yeah. or something like that, but definitely not the. Well, that's the not very whiz on the budget of you if you went with that, is it? So <laughs> if that happens, I'll take it off. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You heard it right. If I get a huge item, I will take budget off and I just oh, think well, there you go. Whiz on. Whiz on. Sounds dumb. Whiz on a watch. Whiz on. A... <laughs> so I can see we've we've sort of evolved in the collecting, which is really fascinating. From a Seiko that had true core meaning to you as a yeah. person and a story, rather than just a watch, right? It became more than an object. Oh, definitely. And I think that's the beauty of watches. Um, and then we've gone something that has just been a reliable watch for nine years and has survived everything you've put it through, incl including beating the crap out of people, which is which is amazing. Unfortunately, we got beaten. Oh, okay. I mean, they don't have to know <laughs> that. You could have kept that. Yeah, yeah. He, he's, a, he's a ninja warrior, really. That's what he's saying. So, and then next, enemy <laughs> Speedmaster, uh, which changed your collecting because you got this as something to pretty much test the waters before going on to the main thing. Yeah. And instead what it did is made you realize you don't want the main thing. You no. actually prefer this. Um, and having more I'm, pieces. Which I'm sure the wife was very happy about hearing that, you know, is uh, much less. So <laughs> That's <laughs> for sure. Days. Although she was expecting not to buy anything else then, but I'm still buying smaller pieces. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. It, it never ends. She's happier <laughs> than she would have been. She's not happy yet. <laughs> Hopefully she's not watching this. Anyway, so from there, we're going on to more Seiko. So we're back to sort of square one. Um, tell me about this piece. So this one um, is one of the first editions of the high beat Seiko Lord Marbles. So it's a 36 beat per hour, 36,000 beat per hour version. Um, so this is the second in the world, second movement in the world of the Gira Perga with this beat. Um, and this is one of the earliest versions. Uh, it's got an engraving in the back, plus the case back is really faded now, but it does have the little um, seahorse showing it is from um, um, 67. Just about, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you can barely make it out but it is there very nice this one i picked up on reddit you're never gonna believe it for how much it was 80 pounds <laughs> with shipping from the us bargain so a guy bought it for himself um started tinkering with it didn't have the right crown but he did have the right stem but he just had enough and like whatever some yeah. people buy it okay it was up there for like a week and no one went for it i was like jesus i wonder so yeah, i got it quid, yeah got a crown for 15 or 30 quid something Put it in myself. A bit another best job. <laughs> so yeah, um, it does need some kind of work from Antique Watch Go downstairs because the the, oh, the winding is a bit hard. But it does keep time. The seconds is buttery smooth. Um, and I never really had a dress watch because I don't dress up that often. So having an actual proper dress watch for, it for you know multiple hundreds of pounds or maybe even thousand pounds is sort of just for me is a waste of money because mm -hmm. I could buy something that I'm actually wearing actively um, and this one was perfect because of that it's cheap it's still a nice dress watch it's small you know it's 36 I believe yes yeah 35 36 and I think it's quite interesting you're saying that about the dress watches but yet the next two watches we're going to be looking at are pretty much dress watches so yes. clearly this actually changed your opinion and made you realize that they can be toned down I think it's also coincided with how my um, work changed my okay. jobs changed I used to work in hospitality for years and years and years and obviously dress watches in hospitality especially bar work don't mix no no because um, you don't Me. want them messed up don't like you know water beer spirits on it um, so that's why it was always a no-go for me mm -hmm. and then at this point I started working in retail so having nicer right. pieces were actually an idea I could I could entertain right and that's how we got into one of the nicest vintages I had over the years is a beautiful King Seiko, it's a 45. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, it's, a, it's yeah. a really gorgeous watch, and every time I see this, it puts a smile on my face, because I was very fortunate, and thank you for this, I, me and Leah were invited to your wedding, Yes. and this is the watch, and we'll hopefully put up a wrist shot for you guys, but this is the watch that you wore at the wedding. Yeah, so this was my wedding watch. And it was also the watch that we were entrusted to get polished for you, and get ready for the big day. And uh, a new crystal. And a new crystal as well, so um, every time you wear this, it puts a smile on my face, and it brings me back to being in Hungary. With oh, you yeah. and enjoy good night. what yeah exactly very good nice uh whoa, never again for a while <laughs> but this watch is is incredible and your strap pairing uh, on, on most of the straps is fantastic and i mean it's a strap special. monster anyway yeah. um but again it's such a fantastic watch you got the iconic uh lugs as well and just the case i think under 10 under 10 mils anyway it wears so well it's just a beautiful piece yeah and the profile of it i mean these are fantastic <clears throat> if you're looking for that Grand Seiko feel, like modern Grand Seiko feel, but vintage. The King Seiko or, or any of this lineup, I think are incredible pieces, so definitely. And to be fair, at this point in time, back in the 60s, they were neck and neck, King Seiko and then Grand Seiko. I mean, this one also has the 36,000 beats per hour movement. So again, high beat, buttery smooth, and yeah. just, just perfect. Well, rumor has it they were actually competing against each yeah, other. Yeah, so right? they were sort of separate companies. That's yeah. what I'm saying, neck and neck, they had to see which who, who's better i mean it's incredible really to think about that back in the 60s they decided to put these two uh two camps basically against each other to create the best products and they they were already not even considering themselves as competition to the swiss they were in competition with Danger. themselves and i think that's so interesting one thing that always draws me in with seiko it's great to see and for you to have two of them i mean it's it's, it's brilliant and i guess as well it's such a lovely pickup to um around 400 ish pounds it's yeah they're fantastic great fantastic so from there to a watch that i both love and at the moment not so much if you haven't seen my state of the collection go see that and you'll see why baltic mr mr01 uh, which is the micro rotor that baltic just released not too long ago and um, i completely missed it to be honest because i was at work uh, not with james not unfortunately, this still yes. still hospitality <laughs> because he's only playing the part time i know terrible uh, again <laughs> you guys and girls keep buying we'll keep doing it please <laughs> um so i completely missed it by the time i finished work and i just looked at it everyone was saying oh yes great baltic yeah i got it i bought it and then and it was already sold out so i missed it. i was like okay i'll see james's because obviously i ordered one um and if i like it i might try and get one second hand or wait for the restock his came in, looked lovely, fantastic. As we know from the other video, it stopped <laughs> pretty much in a couple of hours. Yeah, yes. well, I've, I've never had much luck with personal watches that I buy for myself. No. Um, and that was another one that I just didn't, unfortunately. Yeah. So after that, I started looking at them, but of course, second-hand prices were just blowing up. Silly, yeah, yeah. Eight, nine hundred, thousand 900, 1,000 pounds, double, triple prices. So I asked Baltic about restock, which was the next year. So all right, that's not going to happen. And then a lovely person on, on Instagram, you know who you are, uh, messaged me on the, one of my posts that he's got one and he, he's willing to let it go. And he did for, you know, retail price. So thank you very much. Very I've nice. been wearing it quite often and I love it. And I've been quite lucky with the movement as well that although winding is a bit grainy. And the noise of the rotor. And I'm used to it. i got loads of Miyoto watches, <laughs> yeah. you know. So I'm it's used to the rotor. That's I don't even recognize, uh, notice it anymore. Um, but yeah, it's a watch that's yeah you've, <laughs> you've been you enjoying. It's not perfect, but at the end of the day, design wise, it is it's exactly. I mean, um, obviously, my tastes are, are changing throughout the years. Um, I don't think like five years ago I would have ever thought about buying this at all, never. And here I am. I did buy it, and I love it. So you know, and you wear it quite changed. regularly. And I think what's really interesting is something you said with your story is these watches are often getting bought by people who are just intending to flip them and make money. And it's a real shame that that's where the, the industry's gone. But as we found out here, there are all true collectors out there who are still looking to give their watches another chance through true collectors. So I am a true collector then. You are a true collector. We've, we've established, <laughs> there we go. Um, so it's great to see that that is exactly what happened. And, you know, it, I wish it happened more often. So well done to that person for doing that. It's really good of you, especially when you could have made some extra money and you decided rather than that, let it go to a collector who's actually going to enjoy it. So yeah, touche. So that leaves us to the last watch the last on the bit. table. And what is this? The newest edition for the next couple of days at least. Um, hopefully for die trick to, uh, <laughs> -trick to arrive. Um, is the Seiko Ginza limited edition, 140th anniversary. And um, 
when I first saw this watch on the on the internet, I did not like it at all. No, it reminds me of like it's a Spider Man watch. But blue. <laughs> I didn't think about that, but James. It's, it's Spider Man's watch. I'm not gonna be able to unsee that, thank you, James. <laughs> um, I just wasn't a huge fan at first of the case, really, of anything to be honest. So um, it's a weird thing to see it here. But um, on Facebook, um, in the Christopher Ward Enthusiast Forum group. We're in Christopher Ward, so exactly. shout out, there you go. At least five people bought it, and they just kept spamming it in the group chat, or in the only group, uh, so I kept seeing it each and every day, multiple times. I was like, okay, it's not too bad, the case is nice. All right, the dial is cool. Okay, you know what, this is actually pretty damn cool. Okay. And in a week or two, I got one. Uh, and I didn't regret it. I think it's a lovely piece. Um, the dial really comes alive in different lights as well, in different lightings. Um, and just a cool watch. Again, wears pretty nice. Again, I think it's 39mm, mm -hmm. so perfect for my smaller wrist. Yeah, just I mean, a cool watch. It looks fantastic, and I think Seiko have nailed the design. As I say, the Spider Man watch, uh, more more of a joke more than anything, but it, it's a good looking watch, and I think it's it, it's very fitting, really, that we've gone from Seiko to Orient to then a Speedy to then Dressy, and you've you've experimented in the realms that you wouldn't usually go in. And it sounds to me like this is another one of those. Yeah, and I think it's quite interesting because you briefly touched on what's coming next. Um, share what that is because I think people would be surprised based on maybe not actually after seeing this but I think they would still be oh yeah surprised. I see what you're going for um, so we put up a picture about it as well um, so the Dietrich Skin Diver 1 so I got the Pacific Blue Very nice. which should be with FedEx by now hopefully and should arrive um, before Christmas so looking forward to that <laughs> and it looks fantastic I saw some people already got it and I just can't wait I just can't wait um the guys look fantastic there. They look out, looked out for me with the shipping as well because they know sort of a it, it makes going a difference. away, so it, it needs to come here. Yeah, but and it um, makes a difference when the company go above and beyond. And this is where, as you say, the micro brands, the smaller brands are doing exactly, exactly that. Yeah. And do you think that's where your collection is going to continue to evolve? I think so. I would like to see um, one or two bigger pieces as well. Okay. Um, I love the Seamaster 300, Diver, Diver 300. I love them. I would love a white one. Um, might happen, might not. Um, it's just not in the cars at the moment. But again, you just cannot walk away from micro brands, in my opinion. No, I agree. I agree. It's just so hard to to just stay with Swiss watches or, or big brands because they cannot innovate as much. No, and these are doing much more fun, as yeah. you say. And I think that's where. That's where the entertainment's at, and it's been it's been really great to see your collection, see how this has evolved, and hear your stories. And I think it's I think the viewers are going to have enjoyed it as well. So let us know down in the comments what you thought. What's your favourite watch of Danny's collection, uh, and what would you add to this collection? What That's do you think idea. is missing? Um, so I look forward to hearing that. Try to keep it under a you know would reasonable you? price because otherwise I'm going to sleep under the bridge. Yes, exactly. Or we'll be staying here in the office. So. Thank you for joining us. I really appreciate much. it. It's been great to have you on. And uh, we'll see you all in the next video. See you later.